content warning. Ableism, sexual assault and slavery mentioned. Okay, the denigration of handicapped people. Oh boy, gotta love this. All right. No one whose testicles are crushed or whose penis is cut off shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. Why do they have to talk about penises so much and testicles? Like, what's the deal? Like, can I ask why the Bible talks so much about private parts? Whosoever hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatever so man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. A blind man or a lame, or that he hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crook back, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken, he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish." that he profane not my sanctuaries. Leviticus again. For the record, this also means I'm not going to heaven because I broke my arm. I am broken handed or broken armed. So just so you guys know, if you wear glasses, according to this text, you don't go to heaven. If you guys have ever broken bones, not going to heaven. If you're too short, not going to heaven. That is That does not make any sense. This next one from Ephesians says, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place. All right, all of you among us jokers in the chat, hell. If religion is what soothes your mind and makes you feel better and you feel fulfilled in your life, living it that way, then live your life that way. I would say as long as you're not taking away the freedoms of other people around you, then you should feel free to practice whatever religious belief. I don't believe that this is the way you're supposed to live. I don't believe these books necessarily teach the best values in the whole world. And so I have separated myself from it. I still think it's more important that you are morally sound as a person, but that's not to dismiss what brings you peace in your life. So this is 14 most abominable Bible verses. So this one says, God himself will kill tens of thousands if it pleases him. First Samuel 6, 19 in the King James Bible version. And he smote the men of Beth Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Even he smote of the people 50,000 and three score and 10 men. If you looked into the ark and you just kill people for it, I would say that's not great. That's not very forthcoming. Wait, sex slavery condoned? When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again. I, I think that is morally unjust. I personally disagree very strongly with this. Cannibalism? No, this is not about cannibalism. This is a lie. And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. What? I didn't know this existed. Maybe this is something as a child. They were like, mm, children are not gonna read about cannibalism until the Bible. Oh my God. This is in the Bible. This is in like all the versions. If your genitals have been damaged, stay out of church. Incest and getting drunk with dad is no problem if the world is running thin on suitable DNA donors. I don't wanna read this one. I know of this one. I don't wanna fucking read it. Maybe this is an incorrect interpretation because why not? All right, let's go to the King James one because a lot of people like the King James one. All I need to see is the last line. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. <sighs> anyway, looking at a woman with desire is akin to adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This is a quote that's getting pretty popular, Matthew 5, 28. And the reason being, right, is for many years, it's even still ongoing for the record. Men tell girls, women tell girls, you must dress modestly, right? And even around current rape culture, right? It's it's your fault or it's what were they wearing? And the reality is it shouldn't matter what they were wearing. And even according to those that claim they're good Christian men, it shouldn't matter because if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart already. This has nothing to do with the women and yet it turned around and now it's their fault. 
And, and this is why we get the school stuff where it's like, oh my God, girls can't show their shoulders. Like, I'm sorry. If you're an adult teacher and you find a child's shoulder sexy, that's not the child's fault. It's you who has a problem. Oh, apparently again, incestuous rape is showing up in Kings 2. We'll look at the full context for the record, but let's go ahead and read what this says. And when she has presented him the meat, he took hold of her and said, come lie with me, my sister. She answered him, do not so, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing must be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. But he would not hearken to her prayers, but being stronger, overpowered her and lay with her. So we're looking at 2 Kings 13, 12. Oh, this one's different, guys. Hold up. Now, this seems to be different. So perhaps this is actually wrong. Did I read the wrong? I, it says 2 Kings. This doesn't seem to be correct at all. Let's go and try this again. I'm going to be straight up because I'm looking just at 14 and they say 14. He would not hearken to her prayers, but being stronger, overpowered her and lay with her. And 14 here, when she became sick with the illness of which he was to die, came down, uh, jo Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over him and said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he said, take bows and arrows. So he took bows and arrows. Where, are, what are they pulling? I'm sorry if I'm like all over the place, but I'm like, I need to get to the bottom of this because no other translation says this. And I, I need to know what the heck is going on here. Second book of Kings. So it says to Samuel. And I know I think saw someone, oh yeah, Steve with a Q. It looks like King James version calls this book to Samuel, whereas this Bible calls it to Kings. Okay. So look up to Samuel chapter 13. Okay. To Samuel 13. Oh dear God. Oh my God. It literally says it. Oh God. Oh my God. What the fuck? Actually, even afterwards, it is fucking bad. We're gonna start at seven and we're gonna end at 19. Then David sent a messenger to the house of Tamar saying, now go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was laying in bed and she took dough, kneaded it, made pastries in his sight and baked the pastries. Then she took the tray and served them to him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, have everyone leave me. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food into the bedroom so that I may eat from your hand. So Tamar took the pastries, which she made and brought them into the bedroom to her brother, Amnon. Then she brought them to him to eat. And he took hold of her and said, come sleep with me, my sister. But she said to him, no, my brother, do not violate me for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful sin. As for me, where could I get rid of my shame? And as for you, you will be like one of the fools in Israel. Now then, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not listen to her since he was stronger than she. He violated her and slept with her. When Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, indeed, the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, get up, go away. But she said to him, no, because this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you have done to me. Yet he would not listen to her. Then he called his young man who attended him and said, now throw this woman out of my presence and lock the door behind her. Now she had on a long sleeved garment for this is how the virgin daughters of the king dress themselves in robes. Then his attendant took her out and locked the door behind her. Tamar took ashes and put them on her head and tore her long sleeve garment, which was on her. And she put her hand on her head and went on her way, crying out as she went. We're not done. We can keep going. When Absalom, her brother said to her, has Amnon, your brother been with you? But now keep silent, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this matter to heart. So Tamar remained and was isolated in her brother Absalom's house. Now, when King David heard about these matters, he became very angry. But Absalom did not speak with Amnon either good or bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he violated his sister Tamar. Now it came about two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons to celebrate. Now, I'm hoping to God in this next one because it says Absalom avenges Tamar. Does he kill him? 
Okay, let Amnon go. He goes, I see when Amnon's heart is cheerful with wine, I say to you, strike Amnon, then put him to death. Do not fear, have I not commanded you myself? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did to Amnon, just as Absalom commanded. Then all the king's sons got up and each mounted his mule and fled. It seemed like they did kill him. I don't know. This is very uh, torn to me because the one brother says, you know, just don't talk about this. Don't deal with this anymore. But then he's later on killed by all the brothers. So then it's like, keep it all in the family, but then the family will will kill him. At least there is a conclusion to this saying this will get taken care of. And it did get taken care of as later on. She is avenged. Only Amnon is dead. That one is taken out of context. I will say that. That sucks when that happens. Whew. Oh, this has been a lot of looking, if we're gonna be totally honest. 